Hello YouTube. As you can see if you've seen my other video, um, I am not in my truck. This is my work vehicle. And that's kind of the subject of this video. Um, I mentioned before, Wrangler Star talked about how product reviews on YouTube uh, come up almost first on Google all the time now. And I had noticed that before, but I'd never really uh, made the correlation and realized that, that Google was ranking those so high until he had said something. Um, and it kind of made me think uh, I should know that because anytime I look at buying something, I, I go to YouTube first and see what people have used it and, and how they liked it and whether or not it's a good product. So um, it's a great system. Um, works really well and when I was thinking about that I realized that I have a lot of experience with this particular vehicle and lots of people would want to look at it um, for a for a car whether it's for work or for a family car um, and I drive much much more than most people so my experience in it is somewhat accelerated and could help people to know whether or not it's going to be good. So far it has been. There's a few little things to be aware of and uh, I can bring those to people's attention and hopefully help somebody out. So uh, before, this is a 2014 Ford Escape. It's my work vehicle. I don't own it. I don't pay for anything on it. Uh, that's a great thing. And because of that, uh, that, that's the reason I have it. I drive a lot for work. I cover all of Utah, part of uh, Wyoming, part of Idaho, part of Montana, part of Nevada, um, and parts of Colorado. So this car I've had for since the end of April, so two and a half months, and it's got close to 12,000 miles on it. I also talked to about 15 other technicians that have the exact same vehicle and so I can kind of get an idea of what they're dealing with as well so if there's anything there I'll share that too so to give you an idea I had a 2012 escape before this as a work vehicle it was great um, I had it for two years when I turned it in it had 98,000 miles on it uh, the only thing other than maintenance that had been done to it was uh, the CV axles got replaced the CV boots were shredded I don't believe that was a Ford fault issue um, I believe right before I got told that they were shredded I had a pretty nasty ice storm in Montana I was driving through I'm pretty sure that's what destroyed those so other than that it was a great car this car has been good as well. This is a, again, 2014 Escape. It has the very small, I believe it's a 1.3 liter four cylinder with the EcoBoost turbo. Performance wise, it has no issues. Um, it's not a race car. You got plenty of get up and go in traffic. I'm in that a lot. I drive up and down a lot of canyons. Um, has no problem power wise there I was worried when I first got it thought maybe there'd be some power issues not at all like I said it's not a sports car plenty of power for the size it is it is two wheel drive it's not all wheel drive um, power wise if you're going up a lot of hills it has a sport mode which I've realized helps a lot with that and uh, so use that the downsides to it not so much a downside, um, one thing to be aware of. Over here, our regular unleaded gas is 85 octane. Um, owner's manual says 88 or better. You will notice a significant performance difference between 85 and 88. 85, you'll, I average about 23 to 24 miles a gallon and it drives like kind of sluggish. 88 or better octane um, if I'm on the highway I can get 32 
average. I've done that over a couple tanks. My mix driving 28 to 29 miles per gallon. So it's definitely worth a few extra cents if you have to buy the mid grade. If you're back east, um, your regular and leaded is usually 88 anyway, so it's not a problem. Um, the only downside, like I said, that wasn't really a downside, just a note. That's what it's designed for is the higher octane fuel. So um, the only downside that I've had so far with this car is the tires that came with it are Continental Contratracks, I believe. And they are terrible. I guess if you live somewhere where you're never going to have wet roads and it's always dry, they may work for you. Out here, it could be sunny in the morning and it could rain quite heavily three hours later. And this thing does not have any traction in water with these tires. Um, they want a hydroplane. They're, they're just terrible. Um, dry traction, they're fine. But um, I have way, way too many different driving conditions to have a tire that that is this bad when it gets wet. I got it in April, so I have not seen any type of uh, snow or anything like that in it. So it is no issues that I know of there, but as bad as it is in water, I can assume they would be useless in snow. So that's something to be aware of there. Either pay for the upgraded tires if you need them or get all seasons as soon as you get the car because they, they're they terrible. I'm, I drive so much that before winter hits, I'm assuming I'll have new ones. So uh, I'm not too worried about it. That's the only real downside to this car so far. Uh, I'll do an update pretty much every time I get an oil change. So probably about every month and a half, two months. Uh, this goes about 9,000 miles between oil changes. So there's a little bit of a, a gap there. Uh, just to kind of give everybody an update if there's any issues or if everything's still going great or anything like that. If there's any questions you have that you want me to look for, uh, put them in the comments and I'll do so. The And we'll go from there. Uh, I do have an... There are two recalls that came out for this. The first one being uh, the doors do not have a lock pin right here on any of them. There's an indicator on the dash that tells you whether they're locked or not. And somehow the way the doors line up, there's some issue where if you push on them, the door might open. I haven't had an issue, so I'm just going to wait till I get in to get an oil change to have them check that recall. The other is not a total, uh, total recall. There's a, a saying for you. Um, it's not an actual recall. It's a, a notice that the the two liter Ecotec and this Ecotec look much the same from the top. So they had issues with technicians overfilling the oil when they um, have it serviced. So they want you to bring it in so they can put a special dipstick in it and put a label on the top of the co engine cover to really make it known that this is a the smaller model motor um, so again nothing super much of an issue I'm at 13,000 now it's due for an oil change at 18 so I'll take it in then and I will update you when that happens uh, until then like I said if you've got any questions or things you want me to look for on it just let me know in the comments and I'll do the best I can to do that. Have a great one.